What's going on, everybody? Welcome to the Total Takedown for UFC 307. This being our most successful show from last week, I got absolutely everything wrong on everything else that I did, but apparently uh, the total calls were actually pretty good. So hope you're tuning in. Take some notes. This is Home of Fight. Subscribe if you haven't yet already, and let's get on into this week's card. First fight of the night, Court McGee takes on Tim Means. Remember, we are fighting at elevation for this fight card, so that changes a lot of things. You're going to want to bet on gas tanks, and finishers who have an opportunity to take advantage of bad gas tanks are definitely going to be something we want to consider. Court McGee is the grinder, even though he's getting a little old. The durability is failing him just a tad bit. I think he's got a huge cardio advantage here in this fight. Even though he's not much of a finisher, Tim Means is a guy who is absolutely cracking at the seams. 41 years old, seems like he's getting finished every time we see him out. Both guys could finish in this spot. We've seen Tim Means chinned. We've seen Tim Means choked out. We have seen Court McGee leave his neck out there a little bit too far and potentially have it snatched. He survived his last submission attempt that was really deep, but that's still danger. And on top of that, he's also getting older, and we've seen him knocked out a couple times recently as well. I think this old man fight has a chance to go under with one of these guys just kind of falling apart. Under 2.5 is plus 165. Over 2.5 is minus 215. Two years ago, this is an absolute deal to go over with these two fighters. But today, mm, under seems a little intriguing to me. Carlos Esparza and Tisha Torres, two and a half total over is minus 660. Ridiculous price tag. Under is plus 240. A good, uh, I'm sorry, plus 420. Uh, a real good example here of why you should be using bet openly. Minus 660 for an over and plus 420 for an under, there's a $2 gap between those numbers. Never, not even once on bet openly are you ever going to experience that. Make sure you're getting that plus 660 if you're trying to take that under instead of getting cheated by two whole freaking dollars. I want to make an argument for an under here in this fight. These are the two decision machinist women's MMA fighters you've ever seen. They have been their entire careers, but there's a huge difference here. Carla Esparza is retiring this week. We've been talking about it all week. She's just coming off of being a new mother. She's absolutely hanging it up after this one. Tisha Torres is not a massive finisher, but Carla Esparza's heart just is not in this anymore. If there was ever a fight where she was going to get too tired to continue, it would be at elevation. It would be when she's not into it anymore. It would be when she's got nothing left to keep her looking for the light at the end of the tunnel. I'm a little bit intrigued by this under just because the number is so massive. Now, obviously, this is a fight that probably should go the full 15 minutes, but you will never catch me laying something like minus 660. Ryan Spann takes on Ovin St. Pru. We've got a one and a half for this one. Over one and a half is minus 125 and under one and a half is minus 105. Again, that should be over minus 125 and under plus 125. Bet openly, folks. Get on the train. Link in the description below. Uh, Ryan Spann essentially is a round one fighter. Has been his entire career. If he does not get the fight out of there, in round one, he completely falls apart. And OSP has maybe a cardio advantage, maybe a durability advantage. We're not entirely sure because he's another old-ass fighter as well. He looked okay in his last fight, but basically just kind of jabbed and front kicked himself the entire time. I don't think Ryan Spann is going to be intimidated by that strategy whatsoever. Ryan Spann is going to cause a car crash here. One of these guys is going to go under, and I think we just see kind of a classic Ryan Spann fight. The last time he tried to slow it down and go the distance didn't pan out so well for him. I don't think he's super interested in trying that again either. So I'm going to say under one and a half, and we see some violence. Cesar Almeida takes on Ihor Poteria in the next fight. One and a half total. We've got a pick them price tag on this one and again just disgusting DraftKings has minus 115 on both sides you're not even laying minus 110 juice these days on some of these books minus 115 on both books this is going to be over under one and a half at even money plus 100 on bet openly and I kind of like the under here I hope Pateria is a guy who's got decent movement good speed good footwork he's tall he's long but he plays with his hands low and he's taking a big step up when it comes to the striking he's taking on a world-class kickboxer boxer in Cesar Almeida. This guy hits like a truck. And now that he's kind of taken his UFC grappling lesson, I think we're going to see a much improved version of him in this fight. And I'm not sure Ihor Pateria can take a punch. What he can do is give one. He's incredibly fast. He's got great hands. And in Cesar Almeida's last fight, we saw him get dropped and rocked early in the first round. This fight can go under. Both these guys absolutely can finish in this spot. Give me some more violence. Austin Hubbard and Alexander Hernandez. This one's had me confused all freaking week because Austin Hubbard 
has the gas tank. Austin Hubbard trains at elevation. The over here, two and a half, is minus 230. And Alexander Hernandez coming back up to 155. We just don't know what we're getting here. He's going to be coming back up where he's had more success. He's got more muscle on the frame. He lasts a little bit longer. But he also tends to go a little bit harder. Sometimes pushes himself to exhaustion. Maybe he uses the wrestling a little bit more. But that has never been something Austin Hubbard has been afraid of. That guy mixes in takedowns himself. There's definitely a world where Alexander Hernandez knocks the head off of Austin Hubbard, but finishing this guy is not easy and it has not happened very often. Austin Hubbard has a long track record of finishing in round two and round three once his opponents are worn out and tired, and Alexander Hernandez on a big losing skid Maybe we see a guy who's potentially checked out looking for one last paycheck before he walks out the door. This could be a finish on both sides. This could be a finish on the Hubbard side, believe it or not. I'm going nowhere near and over at minus 230. It's crazy because I do kind of think Alexander Hernandez wrestles his way to a must-win type of decision in this spot, and it gets greasy, but that doesn't mean it's actually going to go that way, even if he tries to. If he falls apart and he slows down, Hubbard will get him out of there. Uh, Marina Rodriguez takes on Yasmin Lucendu in the next fight. We've got another 2.5. Over 2.5 is minus 345. Under 2.5 is plus 2. 50. Yasmin Lucindu is getting a big step up in competition in this spot. We know Marina Rodriguez has struggled with grappling in the past, and that is where Le- Yasmin Lucindu appears to shine. Um, when it comes to the striking, I still think Marina Rodriguez probably has the advantage here, but if it does hit the ground, Lucindu's shown that she can absolutely handle herself down there on the mat. Marina Rodriguez has never been submitted, however, so this is a tough one where I think there's a lot of ways this fight goes under. If Lucindu is not quite ready for the striking, the caliber somebody of Rodriguez, she could find find herself in some trouble on the feet. Rodriguez hits a lot harder than most of her previous opponents. And then on the ground, Lucindu is dangerous. So there's ways this fight goes under, but for some reason, I think this is going to be a greasy over where we see a lot of clinching, a lot of grappling, Lucindu hanging in there when she needs to, Rodriguez really pushing the rookie, and we see this fight make it the full 15. Steven, Wonderboy Thompson, and Joaquin Buckley, another 2.5. Over is minus 220. Under 2.5 is plus 170. I kind of like violence here in this spot. We've seen Joaquin Buckley run face first into a lot of shots before. He's so hyper-aggressive, his opponents can time his entries and they knock him out. It's happened more times than we can count. Steven Wonderboy Thompson still has that pop in his hands and his feet. He very much still has knockout power. We saw what he did to Kevin Kevin Holland not too long ago. Joaquin Buckley also, with that explosive power, he can wrestle, he 